Welcome to a video on voting methods. In this video we're going to try to understand and use preference tables. Use the plurality method to determine elections winner, the board account method to determine elections winner, and then the plurality, plurality with elimination method to determine the winner, and finally pairwise comparisons. So starting off let's look at a preference table. So a preference table all the ballots in which a voter is asked to rank the candidates in order of preference, like this would be my first choice, second choice, third choice, that kind of thing. And this is an example with four candidates, P, R, S, and T, Paul, Rita, Sarah, and Tim, and we're ranking them with uh, all the different uh, ballot types. Uh, there's 37 ballots, and these 37 ballots have the rankings. All right, so there's uh, the very first one we'll look at, P, R, S, T, just in order. But then like the 37th S was first, R, T, and P. And then we just have different variations of that. So what we would do is we would take all these ballots and we would group together the ones that were alike. All right, and maybe we look something like this. There were 14 of those ballots that had P, R, S, and T. And then there was 10 that had S, R, T, P. All right, 8 that had T, S, R, P four that had RTSP, and then finally just one that had STRP. All right, and then um, we would calculate, you know, um, who the winner was based on that. Now, there's different methods to do that calculation, and that's what we're studying in this section. All right, but if you just look down any of these particular um, columns, there are 14 of the ballots that had P first, and then R second, S third, and T fourth. All right, and then there were, you know, four ballots that had R first. And so anyway, it's just a count, and we're just grouping them together by like ballots. Okay, when, when we're making our preference table. All right, so here's just another example, just to be able to make sure you can read one of these, because there's a lot of these coming at you in these next sections. So, how many people select Adana as their first choice? So we look at the preference tables that we have, and D is the first choice. So there's 120 with D as their first choice, but there's also another 100 right beside it with D as their first choice. Okay, especially the only difference between those two groups of ballots is the last two C and A get switched around. So there's 220 total just from adding those two together. We had the 120 and the 100, and we get 220 people that voted for Donna as their first choice. Okay, so that's just being able to understand what we're, we're talking about here. All right, a lot of times we're, we're looking at just first choice, but then other times we'll, we'll have rankings as like a point system for first, second, third, and so on. All right, the plurality method. This is... Um, what we do here is we we look for the candidate uh, with the most first place votes, and that's the winner, All right? If it's a tie, then we'll get to that in a little bit. But typically, we uh, if we have just one candidate and they have the most first place votes, they're the winner. Okay, so if we're looking at a preference table, we're just looking along the top row, All right? The first choice. So we see there was fourteen that voted for whomever the P represents. And then there was 10 for S, another one over here for S, so that's 11 total for S, 8 for T, and, and 4 for R. So P was the winner because nobody beat 14. You do look, you do make sure that you don't look just the highest group and assume that's it. You know, if all the rest of these, like for instance, if, if both of these had been T's, T here and T here, then that would be 18 to 14. So it's not always just the first one, it's just whomever has the highest when you total and tally everything up. Alright, uh, the board account method. You make your way from last place to first place starting with one. So the, the, that's the point system. So you get one point for a last place vote, two points for the next to last, three points for the next higher up, and, and so on and so on and so on. Until basically, depending on how many people you could vote for, how many people were running, um, you've got that many points going to the person who got the first place vote. All right, the points are totaled for each candidate separately, 
and then the person who gets the most points is the winner. Okay, so you could get a candidate who got a lot of first place votes in one particular group of ballots, but didn't get really any first place votes in any others, and that candidate would then not win the election. So we're looking at the exact same uh, group of votes that we saw from before. If you noticed, it's the same one. Okay, we got P just in that same column. Just notice right here we got PRST had 14. And notice in this one that we're looking at now, we've got PRST. So it's the exact same one that we looked at before, but we're just showing that if we use a different method, we might not have the same winner. And so that ends up being the case here. So P gets 56 points here, but P only gets 10 in this one, 8 in this one, 4 in this one, and 1 in this one. So even though whomever P was won uh, overall last time, just because of that, th there was a big number of, of votes or ballots that had her first, um, all the rest of them had this person last. And if you notice that count, that tally, 56 and 10 is... 66, 66 and 8, 74, 78, 79. But then if we look at R here, R's got 42 and 30. That's already 72, 72 and 16. It's 88, 88 and 16 is 104, and then two more 106. So R is already going way beyond P as far as just points go. So when we do it this way, we calculate everybody's points individually in, in each column and then add them all up. So apparently I did my math wrong on both P and R, but you see P ended up with 79 total points, R with 106 points. So R, Rita, ends up being the winner here because she ended up with the most points total. Okay. So in the first method we did, the just the plurality method, um, Paul was the winner. <coughs> Paul had 14 first place votes and nobody else beat that. But now using a different method, we got a different uh, candidate being the winner. Okay, so that's the first two. That's the board account, just giving some points. Um, then we have something called plurality with elimination. So what we do here is you can't just win by getting the most first place votes. You've got to have um, a majority. So meaning you have to have more than 50%. And if there's not a uh, 50%, if, if nobody gets a majority, then we eliminate the candidate with the fewest. So basically we have a runoff election, if you will. And in that runoff election, whoever had the fewest in the first election is eliminated so you can't vote for that person. So now the people that voted for that person who is now eliminated are forced to vote for somebody else. And the thinking is, all right, well, eventually we'll have a majority. And then if there's still not a majority, we have to do it again and eliminate somebody else. So eventually the thinking is with, with the elimination method, you'll get down to two if you have to. You'll get down to two. And when you get down to two, somebody will eventually get the majority. Somebody will get the 50.1% or whatever is needed to make it a majority. All right, so here's an example. Same same group. So people total voting. Again, if you add these numbers, 14 and 10 is 24. 24 and 12 is 36. And one more is 37. Um, when Paul won the first time, he had 14. Well, 14 is not a majority of 37. If you took um, 37 and divided it in half, you get 18 and a half. So we need 19, 19 votes for somebody in, in, to be the first choice for there to be a, um, a winner. Well, if you look at who's got the least, um, first place votes here, who's uh, lowest and first choices. If you go across the top, you got P's got 14, S has got 10, T's got 8, R's only got 4. So who does that mean is out? That means Rita is out. And 
Rita was our winner last time. So we've already we're guaranteed that we're not going to get the same winners we got with the last method. All right, so because Paul didn't win a majority, we kick Rita out of the selection. We do a runoff. So all you people that voted for Rita, now you've got to vote for somebody else. So if you look at what we have now, um, in this first table that we eliminated, we've got P, S, and T. We, all those people, Rita's gone. So now the table's going to look something like this. So who's got the, uh, the highest number of force? first place votes now well Paul's still edging out Tim barely with uh, 14 first place votes but still 14 is still not a majority of 37 so we would then um, eliminate who's ever got the least now which is going to be Sarah so now S Sarah's out of this thing and the assumption is, which is not a great assumption when we're going through and doing it like this, uh, it t there would t technically be a runoff, but if you're eliminating, you know, Sarah is the first choice, you're assuming that, that people would just naturally stick with this. You know, all right, well, T was my second choice. And now when they're faced with the reality that Sarah is no longer there, are you sure you'd stick with, with Kim? Um, when we do this method, and that's not always the case. Of course, people have the, uh, the the ability to change their mind when they go to that runoff election. But but for the ease of the mathematics, we're just going to assume everybody sticks with what they what have. So now we're down to Paul versus Tim. They're the two that are going to be in this last runoff. And if we look, uh, Paul is is behind is only ahead of Tim in that very first one. Tim beat out Paul and all the rest of them. So 23 for Tim and 14 for Paul. Now we finally moved beyond 19. So Tim would be declared the winner. So if you notice in method one, the plurality method without elimination, just whoever has the highest, it was Paul. And then when we went to method two, which was the board account, it was Rita. Rita ended up being our winner. And then if you looked at method three with uh, elimination, we eventually got down to where it was just Paul and Tim, and Tim, Tim ended up winning this thing. So we've got three methods, three different winners. we got one last method, a fourth candidate to win. So, you know, you can probably predict this ending. But the pairwise comparison method. So uh, when we do pairwise, com pairwise comparison, um, each candidate is paired with one another. So we, we make every comparison head to head. And whomever wins the most, every time you basically you kind of give points again, like every time somebody wins head to head, you, they get a point. And then whoever has the most points wins. This little formula we got here, this is how many comparisons have to be made um, for the, the comparison, pairwise comparison method to work. So in our um, in our thing that we're doing here, there's four candidates. So this would be four, and then four is n, and then four minus one would be three. So that's four times three is twelve. Twelve divided by two is six. We'd have to make six different comparisons to be able to do this. Okay, so everybody gets ranked, um, and we make the comparisons based off each pair of candidates at a time. All right. If a majority pairs X to Y, then X receives the point if the majority prefers Y to X, then Y receives the points if there is a tie. If it's like six for one, six for the other, then that candidate receives a half a point each. Okay. And after all comparisons made, the candidate with the most points wins. All right. So if we do that, again, there's going to be six choices that we have to make. So what we're going to do is in each of these 14, Paul would win against anybody. So there's going to be, you know, P versus R. All right, well, P beats R 14 times right here. All right, so Paul would beat Rita 14 times. But then Rita 
beats par. Reader beats par. Reader beats par. Reader beats par. So reader beats par all the rest of the times. 10 and 8 is 18. 18 and 4 is 20. 2 and then 1 is 23 times. Okay, so Rita is is uh, the winner. Rita has uh, a head-to-head -head win against Paul. So Rita gets a point for beating Paul. Okay, now if we do Paul versus um, S, I've already forgotten who S was. S was... Sarah. So if we did Paul versus Sarah, Paul beats Sarah 14 times. All right? But then Sarah beats Paul, Sarah beats Paul, Sarah beats Paul, Sarah beats Paul. All right, so Sarah beats Paul 23 times. Again, it'll be the same thing as it was with Rita. So now Sarah has a point. All right, and then we would do it again with Paul versus um, Tim, and again Paul beats Tim the first one. Everybody beats Paul in the last one because, or the, all the rest of them, because Paul's last and all the rest of them. So Tim would get a point. All right. So that's Paul versus everybody. Now I made my way to like Rita. Rita versus. And by the way, I've made three comparisons. I only have to make six down here. So now we're going to take Rita versus um, Sarah. All right. So Rita beats Sarah here. So there's 14 for Rita. Sarah beats Rita here. So there's 10 for Sarah. Sarah beats Rita here, so there's 8 for Sarah. And then Rita beats Sarah, so there's 4. And then Sarah beats Rita for 1. So that's 18 to 19. Sarah. So Sarah gets another one head to head with Rita. All right, and then we'd look at Rita versus Tim. Rita versus Tim, Tim versus Rita, Rita versus Tim, Tim versus Rita. Okay, so Rita versus Tim. So Rita wins here. She's got 14. Rita beats Tim here, so that's 10. All right, that's more than uh, 19 again. So Tim can't come back and beat her with all the rest of them. So um, the, re it, the rest of it only adds to 13. So Rita's the winner versus Tim. All right, and then we've got um, Sarah versus Tim. So Sarah versus Tim, Sarah versus Tim. So once again, Sarah beats Tim 24 times. So Sarah gets another one. All right, and I didn't write anything for Paul, but Paul end up with zero. All right, so we got Rita with two, Sarah with three, Tim with one, Paul with zero. So using the pairwise comparison method, Sarah would be our winner. All right, she won three times where um, Rita only won twice and Tim only won once. So we just make those comparisons with the table, just who's ever higher, um, you know, first choice versus second choice all the way down, whoever's higher. It gets a win head to head, and then you count how many wins they get by those top rows in the columns. These are like, you know, how many wins each candidate gets are going to be determined up there. So who's ever higher gets that many points, basically, if you want to think of it that way. So, the point being, we had four methods, the exact same voting ballots, and we had four different candidates win. So we had to be um, really careful on which method we're being asked to, to use because you can't just look at who's on top 
and just assume that they're going to be the winner. Okay. All these different methods can produce different election outcomes with the exact same election results. So you have to pay attention to which method you're being asked to use and make sure you understand how to use that method.